Today we're recording the show and we're having a wonderful time. This company is terrific. The cast recording of The Visit, which has taken 14 years to um, finally get to this point and to be on Broadway. So it's very, very exciting for us. Today we're here at Avatar Studios doing our cast recording. So it's a, it has a real family collaboration uh, feel to it. We're all sitting out here like it's our living room. It's like uh, uh, our dad's den with the wood paddling. <laughs> I think this is really one of their strongest works. And these are some of the most beautiful songs you've ever heard. Really. It bears listening over and over again. It's so sophisticated that it requires a recording to really understand the complexity and the craft that's in this score. It's remarkable. I don't think there is a collection of voices on Broadway at this moment in time that is more glorious. I think that this cast is making a sound like, unlike any that's out there, and I want it preserved for history. We're going to see our joy ascending, our joy ascending, and never again, we'll never again, we'll tell us lies. We're going to have a happy ending, a miracle made right in front of our eyes. Fred and I have been attracted to material which usually has a, a strong entertainment value. At the same time, underneath that entertainment is something not necessarily dark, but something which exposes human behavior in a way that is more than just light entertainment. It is both high art and entertaining bang for your buck. There's one explanation of what the show's about that makes it sound like a soap opera. There's another explanation of the show that makes it sound like an old morality tale. And in fact, it's probably both. It's a wonderfully atmospheric story and a great love story, an operatic love story. Operatic in the sense of the high aspiration, the art, the artfulness of the piece. It's about the richest woman in the world who has a score to settle. She was bullied. She wants vengeance. She wants the town to know that they were too small for her. And there's an awful lot of ways you can justify some really bad behavior if you're needy enough. And there's no question that these people are needy. Many years ago in Brocken, joy would overflow in Brocken. Everything was bright here, absolutely right here. Goethe spent a night here in Brocken. Life to be so sure. They're, they're uh, financially needy. They're, they're morally needy. Uh, they are really in a bind. And she plays that like a master politician. It I think it's about the moral choices that we make when temptation is put in front of our faces. Materialism, the value of life, what our personal values are and what you'd be willing to throw under the bus. And what does the what is the town prepared to do? What compromises are they prepared to make in order to satisfy their needs? All of the landed gentry you'll see will send out an invitation to me. Come to my party in yellow shoes. Don't I look smart in my yellow shoes? State of the art and forever in style. I walk a mile. would you do for a million dollars? It's a legitimate question. Everyone in the audience is going to say, mm. 
<laughs> no, we're not saying that this is who you are, audience. It's just there are elements of this out in society. And if we look at it, maybe we can learn from it. And it makes you take the thoughts in and apply it to yourself. That's great theater. That's a, that's a great story. It's an important story, and I think it makes, it makes you think about the very real things of life. That's what art is supposed to do, is to make you think about about who you are as a, as a human being and as a society, and this piece is doing that. It's the last of its breed, and it's the kind of thing that Broadway used to do and rarely does anymore. I, gu I guess some shows have it, but not like this. You don't get that in traditional musical theater. You get that when you visit the visit. And they're laughs. I mean, we're making this sound like it's dark and gloomy, all of that. It's everything. You will laugh, and hopefully you will care. And it's really funny. The audience finds themselves, like, laughing at moments that they're not supposed to be. I mean, they'll laugh, and then they'll be like, oh, gosh, am I supposed to be laughing right now? But that's what's so great about a Candor and Ebb show. Look inside my brain, ma'am. And you're sure to find Claire Zakanassian, Claire Zakanassian, always on my mind. We would never leave you, never leave your side. If we had the balls, dear, you would be our blushing. A piece doesn't have to be just funny or just sad or just important, you know, and deep. It can be all of those things. In fact, the best theater contains all of that, and that's what The Visit does. Absolutely. If I had to say some, one thing that the show is about, I'd say it's about love. It's, uh, it's about a lot of other things. And it's about love, romance, betrayal, and revenge ultimately coming back to to romance and, and love. It's about a whole bunch of things, but when you get down to it, it's about love. And there's a song near the end of the show called Love and Love Alone, which sort of, I think, makes that point. When the sun seems forever bright, what can dim its light? Love and love alone So beware, young love Lost in a kiss There's a truth, young love Simple as this Every fond hello Ends in what seems certain to live will die. It's beautiful, it's heartbreaking, it's uh, melodic, it's tuneful, you want to sing along with it. I actually want to renew my vows and have you, you, you sung at my wedding. I, it brings me to tears when I listen to the music. And my answer is you, 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 and it just, it just, oh, it overwhelms, it comes up to here. It goes from my feet, and it, it boils up to my eyeballs, and I almost cry, but I don't let myself because I can't wipe my tears away. It's um, Cheetah Rivera giving what I believe is a legendary performance that will be talked about, not for years to come, but for decades to come. I think it's a, a historic performance. Oh no, my dear, please rest assured, I never did forget. I'm not worried that someone, someone's get, someday someone's going to look at this interview and say, oh, that guy was just selling a bill of goods. 
I think I'm going to get to do the I told you so dance. A lot of people in a lot of circumstances get in front of a camera and say, this production is the greatest thing I've ever been in. These people are the most wonderful people I've ever worked with. You know, and a lot of that is lip service. In this particular instance, we are just all so damn grateful to be in that room. One of the best things about our group and our show is that we want everybody to love it, but we love it so much that we are content in our being able to get into that world. We all, our whole entire company, feels so um, proud to share this with people. A lot of us wouldn't even care if we got paid, that we could just be there telling the story. Uh, hopefully that'll come across in the recording. I, ha I, ha I go home every night and journal about something that someone said, one of these legends said. So it's really, it's really, really special. I, I hope that people um, really love the album. Uh, we do. Anyone studying musical theater will look back upon this production and this cast and remember it as one of the, the really great, great shows to have found its way to Broadway. Yeah.